Hello everyone, this is Mr. Endercoffler, and today we're going to be looking at the guided notes called Equations with Multiplication, When to Use Inverse Operations, and When Not to. Alright, we're going to start with some vocabulary review. Uh, the word operations, make sure you know what this word means. There are four basic operations in mathematics, and those are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Nothing drastic here, just make sure you know that those are called the operations. Now, equations are mathematical statements that actually have an equal sign. A little bit different from expressions that don't have equal signs, but equations do have equal signs. And today, we're obviously based on the title, gonna be looking at equations. Now, here's the big one. The phrase inverse operation, this is something you probably heard from sixth grade math, refers to the operation that is considered the opposite of the original. So for example, I don't have this typed up, but follow along with me as you listen. The inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of subtraction is addition. But we're going to look at these guided notes where the inverse of multiplication is division. Now, it's also true that the inverse of division is multiplication. But on these guided notes, every single equation is going to have multiplication. So we're going to be looking at when do we need to do the inverse of multiplication to solve, which would be dividing, because the inverse of multiplication is division. And when would we not? So, let's make sure we know what it means to solve. To solve an equation means to find out what the variable, in case you forgot what variables are, they are the letters, what the variable must equal to make the equation actually work, to make the equation true. To solve an equation, you're going to have to know when to use inverse operations and when not to. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to ask ourselves on every equation we're given, we're going to ask ourselves what's happening to the variable. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, if I were you, I would go ahead and put some stars around this box here. What's happening to the variable? That's the key. That's the key question you got to ask yourself on every single problem. So let me show you some examples that I have typed up here for you. On this equation, c equals 16 times 7. What's happening to the variable? Well, nothing. This C has nothing next to it. It's already by itself. The only thing that's next to it is an equal sign. So when the variable is by itself, like you see here, C is by itself. It's just next to an equal sign. Nothing is happening to it. When a situation like that shows up on an equation, then you are not going to have to divide on both sides. You're not going to use inverse operations. Instead, you'll just do what the equation says to do, which says to multiply. You'll take 16 times 7. If you have to go off to the side to figure that out, you will, and you'll get your answer of 112. Pretty simple. But let's look at the other scenario. When something is happening to the variable, well, what does that look like? Well, look right here. This time the variable is next to a 90. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, we've talked about this earlier. When a number's right next to a variable, that means multiplication. So the C is being multiplied by 90. So how do we get the C by itself? You see, on the last problem, the C was already by itself. But on this one, it's not by itself. It's being multiplied by 90. So what do we do? We simply do the inverse. And you guys should know the inverse of multiplication is division. So we will divide on both sides by 90. You probably remember in sixth grade math doing the inverse on both sides. Well, that's what we're doing here to get the variable by itself. 450 divided by 90, we work down, gives us 5. 90C divided by 90 will just give us C. Now, why? Because what actually happens is that we take 90 divided by 90, and that gives us 1. But the C is still there. And 1C means 1 times C. And according to the multiplicative identity property, fancy phrase, but it means anything times 1 is itself, 1 times C is, is just C. So that's how the C ends up getting by itself. You'll get the hang of this once we do some other examples together. Let's start with number 1. Pencils in your hand. Let's do 1 and 2 together. All right. What's happening to the variable? That's the key question you always got to ask yourself. Well, on number one, nothing's happening to the variable. It's already by itself. It's just next to an equal sign. So all we're going to do is take 3 times 15. And if you know your times tables, you will know 3 times 15 is 
45. So that's it. Number one, super easy. But number two, a little bit different. Because this time, ask yourself what's happening to the variable. The variable x is next to a 3. That means it's being multiplied by 3. So to get that x by itself, we have to do the inverse, which is to divide by 3 on both sides. That's going to give us x by itself, and 15 divided by 3 will give us 5. And again, if you don't know why it gave us x by itself, look back at this previous example we have over here on the right side of your page, where I have this little information box and it tells you how the variable got by itself from dividing. All right, can you try three and four on your own? I think you can. Hit pause on the video, just do three and four. Don't go further than them. Just try three and four on your own, then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. All right, did you already do three and four? If not, please hit pause now. You got to do them on your own. All right, I'm assuming you already did. Problem number three, where was the variable? Here it is, and it's next to an 11. So that variable is being multiplied by 11. We have to do the inverse, which is to divide by 11 on both sides. 99 divided by 11 is 9, and the right side, we get the n by itself. And there you go, that's how you solve number three. Problem number four, what's happening to the variable? Nothing, it's already by itself. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do, oh, well the right side has two multiplication parts. So let's just do one at a time. Three times 12 is 36, if you know your times tables. So bring down that times two, 36 times two will give you 72. Could you maybe have multiplied all three of them at one shot? Eh, maybe. Maybe, but I think it helps for most people to show their work, to help them not lose track of what they're doing. So that's why I did it piece by piece like you saw here. All right, um, there is one more scenario you should know about, and I have this fully typed up for you here on problem number five. Take a look at it. Here we have R, and not only is it getting times by 24, it's also getting times by three. So what do you do? Well, when you have two or more numbers that are multiplied to your variable, then what I suggest you do is first multiply those numbers together. So that's what I did. I took 24 times three. I'm actually doing the commutative property in my head. I'm switching the order and making it 24 times three. That's gonna give me 72. And then afterwards, after you have finished multiplying those two numbers together, then you'll do the inverse, which of course, inverse of multiplication is division. So that's where I divide by that number, the 72, on both sides. Now, maybe this one would have been a little bit of a pain to do without a calculator, maybe. Uh, but 1080 divided by 72 is 15. And on the right side, we get the R by itself because we divided the 72 away. All right, so take a look at number five and use that as a guide to help you. Now, I'm not telling you that all the rest of the problems are gonna be like number five. In fact, some of them definitely are not, but you might get some that are gonna eventually show up that are gonna be similar to number five. So take a look at that, use it as a guide to help you. All right, I want you to try six, I want you to try seven, I want you to try eight, nine, and 10, and 11. So the six remaining problems, I want you to try on your own. So hit pause on the video now and finish the last six problems of the guided notes, and then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. All right, did you already do six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11? Because I'm ready to go over them, so if you have not done them yet, you better hit pause, and then hit play after you're finished. All right, here we go, problem number six. What's happening to the variable? Nothing, it's just by itself. So five times 11 would give you 55, 55 times four, is 220. Um, you also could have done four times 11 and got 44, and then taken 44 times five and gives you 220. That's the beauty about multiplication. You can go in any order you want because of the commutative property which works with multiplication. Problem number six, what's happening to the variable? Well, do not be fooled. The variable is way over here. It's by itself. There's nothing happening to it. So all you do, take 31 times six, get 186, and you are done. Problem number eight, 
what's happening to the variable. Now, this one is very much like the problem that I had typed up for you, problem number five. Very similar. Because on this problem here, problem number eight, we have the variable p, and it is being multiplied not just by 15, but also times four. So what I recommend you do is take 15 times four, get 60, bring everything else down, then divide by the 60 on both sides to get that p by itself. And if you know 66 divided by six is 11, well, 660 divided by 60, same thing, is also 11. Problem number nine, what's happening to the variable? Nothing, it is by itself. So let's do 15, or sorry, not 15, 18 times five, which would give you 90, bring down the times 70. Well, nine times seven is 63, so tag on the two zeros, and boom, 6,300 is what you will get for your answer for Q. Problem number 10, what's happening to the variable? This time, it does have something happening to it. It's being multiplied by eight. So we're gonna divide by eight on both sides, and that's gonna give you 70. You're like, how, under calculator, how did you do that in your head? Because I know 56 divided by eight is seven, so just tag on a zero, and it's 70. Problem number 11 is kind of like problem number eight, kind of like problem number five, because there are two numbers being multiplied to our variable. We got the seven multiplied to the variable, and we also have the three. So what I recommend you do is take seven times three, which is 21. And I don't care if you leave that 21 on the left or on the right, does not matter to me. Bring down the K, bring down the 84 on the left. Now we do the inverse of multiplying by 21, which is to divide by 21 to get that K by itself. And that's gonna give you the answer of four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our guided notes on equations with multiplications, when to use inverse operations and when not to. The purpose of this page was to get you ready for upcoming guided notes that we're gonna be doing in the near future. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.